changes. Probably most of us uh, present in this room have thought about changes at some point of our lives. Whether it's changing our careers or maybe changing attitude towards our lives. Or maybe changes, changing the way we treat others, our beloved ones, or the way we've been treated. Today I'm going to tell you a story of a man who has changed his life for a better. Uh, the man's name is Patrick. Patrick was the son of political refugees from Congo, former Zaire. I met Patrick uh, during my time in London at boxing gym. Patrick was a committed young individual trying to explore himself, to adjust himself in this constantly changing environment. And uh, Patrick always dreamt of becoming a scientist. However, as time passed, he got on with the wrong company and he became a drug smuggler, a drug dealer. Can you imagine a young, successful individual becoming a young drug dealer, causing wrongdoing to the people, selling drugs on the streets of East London, damaging people's lives, but most significantly, damaging his own very life. And Patrick realized that as time passes by, that he is doing wrong things, that he actually betrayed his own dream of becoming, becoming something bigger in this life. And he knew that he has to change. He had this desire to change. So one day, he walked in his local neighborhood and he saw a gym, a boxing gym. So he went in and he never got back because he absolutely fell in love with boxing. And uh, at that time, he was 27 years old, quite old for, in terms of boxing, in terms of starting a boxing career. But he said, I'm going to break all the barriers, I'm going to break the lock in my mind. Because if you can't change, it's a state of mind. If you change your state of mind, you can change everything. So he started practicing boxing. At the time I met him, he was already 32. And uh, one year after, he turned pro. He turned professional boxer. And once we sit with him in his in the gym's changing room. And he shared his life story with me. And it was so impressive, I want to share it with you too. He told me, Yarnar, you know, I used to ruin my life constantly, every day, every minute, every hour. I used to wake up every single morning at 4 a.m. to sell drugs. And now, I wake up at 4 a.m. every single morning to go running, to go jogging. That's impressive, isn't it? I mean, how sport can change someone's life for a good, for a better. And I was so thrilled by this story. So I've actually realized that uh, I had to do lots of things for my own self-development. Even though I was never related to drugs business, thanks God. <laughs> but still I said, I've got to change the way I treat myself. If Patrick could do, I mean, the guy is without any education. He doesn't have any support. His family are political refugees. He was born during civil war times. And still, he could adapt to constantly changing the world and change himself for better, to be the best version of himself. And uh, the thing is, the world is constantly changing. The world is cosmopolitan. So we all have to change uh, regularly. And it applies uh, in all varieties of our lives, whether it's business, or it's politics, or it's technologies. For instance, Kodak. Uh, probably most of you have heard about Kodak, Polaroid. Probably most of you used to have all these instant photo cameras when you were younger. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to have this for a camera, making instant photo and having this instant photo straight away. So what happened basically to Kodak? When there was a digital boom coming up, digital cameras expanding the market, they failed to adapt to the change. They failed 
to turn the market, the mass market, into the digital camera industry because they thought that uh, the customers would prefer instant cameras more than digital ones. They relied on loyalty and they failed because convenience took over loyalty. And sadly, nowadays, they produce printers. At that moment, they got bankrupt. And there is no more joy of Kodak bringing in our lives. I mean, Polaroid stuff, it's all gone. And uh, getting back to Patrick, the man actually changed his life. He chose hope over fear and change over stagnation. Patrick uh, is some sort of, I, I would say he's a role model at that particular life, uh, life period for me. Because when you see character, when you see inspiration from big screen, you see comics character, Batman, Superman, it's so fantasy, so unreal, unnatural. But when you see someone made from blood and flesh telling you his life story, same as Patrick did, it's quite impressive. And in conclusion, you might want to ask, what's the moral of the story? What you're not wanting to tell us? And the moral of the story is, don't be Kodak, be Patrick. Thank you. Thank you.